these two trees, known as the Preston Park Twins, uh, they're kind of a marker post for, for Preston Park and known to the locality and to the community. And they, they sat there for many, many years, enjoyed by many, many generations. And when one of them succumbed to Dutch elm disease, uh, was cut down, Alistair Peters, um, who looks after the Dutch elm disease in Brighton, he managed to save this tree from being burned for about a year before he came to me and contacted me to come and have a look at the tree and see if I could do something with the tree. I normally work with uh, natural materials and trees always been something that I've been very interested in, um, especially in the area of a tree that's completely hidden. So, so for example, the root system of a tree or um, cavities of a tree that's internally. Um, so when this project uh, um, came my way, I, I told you it was going to be a, such an amazing thing to save and restore it. Um, because as an object, it's very beautiful. The history of it is incredible. And I just thought, you can't just get rid of this. Um, it, it's got to be saved. I um, also do lots of gilding in my work where I just thought the internal space of this tree is so magnificent that can be all gilded and, and turn into some kind of a, um, a beacon for the park. Um, so this is where my, my interest began and the more and more the conversations were taking place, the more I got interested in actually the whole history of the, the elms in Brighton and what's happening with diseases. So the, the, the process began from, uh, from um, uh, trying to find a new location where the work can be taken so we can work on it safely, to finding the resources and the money and the help we needed and uh, people's help because this is a quite big object to just move by hand. Uh, managed to find the Secret Garden in Brighton who supported us in the beginning to, uh, to give us the space to work in, in, uh, quite safely in the garden. Then to, uh, to scaffolding support, to kind of technical support, to um, conic tree help with the transportation of the work. So slowly things were falling into place. So we had to take all the decomposed timber, then we had to stabilise what was left. Um, then the whole tree had to be pinned together. So internally we had to cut lots of sleeves in, into the tree where uh, in, um, embedded some stainless steel wire. A Burr's Decorator Centre was one of our biggest funders on this project who came in and supported the project with all the chemicals and everything that we needed basically. Preservatives, uh, oils, treatments, um, uh, resins and they two companies who they work with came in and supported the project. One is the Bird Oils or Preservatives uh, who provided all the oils and treatments and the other company, Repair Care, who provided all the resin to stabilise lots of areas of the tree that needed stabilising. The process took almost two years um, to, to get to a point where the tree can be stable enough. The tree was moved twice, moved to Secret Garden where we worked for a whole year. Then from Secret Garden we moved back to Preston Park to the original location where the tree was originally planted. Uh, and we worked there for another year to finalise the whole process. Originally I wanted to gild the whole tree with a, with a pure gold leaf, uh, but sadly we couldn't get enough funding to do that. So we used something called Dutch metal, which is like, like a fake gold. It's still a leaf, uh, but it's made out of different metals like copper, brasses and tint. Working with the Brighton City Council has been an interesting process. They supported the project um, quite a big time. Um, they helped with um, quite a lot of funding, uh, where the funding paid for transportation, for um, installing the tree, for engineers, um, airports, um, and also they provided the plaques for the tree and the fencing around the tree. Through working with the tree, the, I, I had my initial ideas what I wanted to do with the tree. But when I was working so closely with it, I started kind of looking at 
all the patterns that are on this tree and there's some incredible markings from the Beatles, the whole history. When we took the bark off, um, uh, the, the, the tree skin, if you like, became apparent that was completely treaded with marks of 400 years, so it's not a small thing. I, I usually char the trees for outdoors, which gives them a patina, but also gives them a preservative, so it preserves them from weathering. But in this case, I decided not to char it because I was going to lose all the markings, so I wanted to keep all that. So there were lots of challenges. Uh, the biggest challenge was finances, so we had a very, very small budget, and most of the budget was used on, as I said earlier, on transportation, on on advice, technical advice. I was so grateful for Burr's helping with all the materials because without them we would have not been able to do the project. And um, I had two amazing assistants and we all gave our time pro bono on this project. Really. So, so we all kind of believed that something like this should be done. It's quite beautiful when you see the two trees together again. So the living tree is still there, the other twin, and, and the sculptural tree, which will stay f hopefully for a long time to be enjoyed by the people.